What's up, guys? And we're back with another raid team. And we're going to be breaking this one down. And I think it's probably one of the most versatile teams out of any of the ones we've made. But before we jump into the team, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It helps support the channel and helps get these videos out to more people. So I appreciate that. And if you want to see any of this kind of content live, make sure to check me out on Twitch. The link will be in the description. So let's just jump into it. All right, guys. So we've got Bell and Beast. And if you guys haven't seen this team, heard of this team, this is one of the teams that you need to get. Not just heroic, but this team is one of the strongest teams that can attack any of the Titans and really put up big numbers. So I'm going to be breaking down kind of the free to play, the first iteration of this team and where I currently have the team. And it's doing pretty good. Now, this team really works well on the Tornado, but it really can do the damage on any of the Titans. If I had to choose a backup Titan, I'm probably taking it up against Lava because the shaking that they can do will really shut down what the Titan is really trying to do. So let's break down the team. We're going to start with the obvious ones. And the first one on the list is going to be Beast. Now, Beast, well, he's a beast. He does a lot of damage, and it's all about his basic move. The way we set up this team is it's all about the calls and the assists that we're going to get from Bell and what you're going to see from Triton as well. The other great spell here is Get Out. So when you're going against the Tornado, you're going to want to use Get Out so that you can get Intimidates down on the little Tornadoes. Once those Intimidates are on the little Tornadoes, they can't do anything. So you essentially shut those down. And because they don't die, the big tornado is not going to revive them. Next, we're going to move on to Bell. So Bell is the other part of this team. And really, the reason why she's there is because of her mirror. Her mirror is going to do the same thing as Get Out and put Intimidate on the other half of the Twisters. Once you do that really early in the run, again, they're going to be shut down. And you're going to be able to attack the main Tornado Titan without having to worry about the little ones. So once you do Mirror the first time, all you're going to do for the rest of the battle with her is do her basic. Because every time she does her basic, she's going to call Beast. And whoever your damage dealer is next to Beast. Now, I mentioned the Lava Titan also being another good Titan because this Mirror and this Get Out ability is also going to be able to put Shaken on the Lava Titan. And so he's not going to be able to put on the continuous damages or any of the harmful effects that he's doing. So again, it gives you a great team on multiple Titans. Next, we're going to talk about the SC. We usually go with Horn King. The reason why we go with Horn King is the fact that he does a lot of damage. The Cauldron Born, well, that's what you want your first move to be. You need to get the Cauldron out. But the only reason you have the Cauldron out is so that you can do more damage against the Titan. So again, you really don't need anything in this skill to be upgraded. You just want to make sure that you're doing that skill first in your match. Where the Horn King shines is just his basic attack. So once you have that cauldron down, you're using your basic attack, a T8 Horn King is going to be doing close to 20k damage each hit. So like we mentioned with Bell, every time Bell uses her basic, you're going to get a hit from Beast and from Horn King. So this is really the trio that you're looking at within the team. The other two, well, those can kind of differ. So I talked about it before that this team has evolved over time. In my original run that I was using, I was using Shan Yu and Merida. So Shan Yu is really good because of his leadership. He can speed up the whole team, make sure you're getting more turns, and it's pretty good. He also has his ability on his attacks. When he crits, he's going to remove turn meter. Now that doesn't always apply, but sometimes it can really help you get in those last few hits that you want for your damage. Merida, on the other hand, is just another good damage dealer. Once she does a couple of her basics, she's going to be empowered. Once she gets empowered, her other special attacks do a lot of damage. We're talking 20,000, 30,000 damage on those shots. Now, once you have Tiana, and I get Tiana is one of those characters, you get her through the leaderboards, you may not have her yet, and she may not be raid ready. But I can tell you, Tiana is very good as a character for this team. She can also put out a summon just like the Horn King, which is what you want against Tornado. But Tiana is really going to be able to protect the team with the gumbo pot with all the protects that it gets throughout time. Not only that, Tiana is going to be able to cleanse the whole team and really keep you fighting in this game. Now for the fifth one, I know this one can be a little controversial, but I brought in Trident into this team, and that's because I don't use the Slap Zone team anymore. There's nothing against the Slap Zone team. I believe the Slap Zone team is a great team, especially against Rock. The problem is, as I've continually upgraded my teams and figured out how to get out that little bit extra damage, my Slap Zone team has been really divided up against other teams within my raid teams that you'll see on later videos. So because of that, I brought Trident into this team so that we can use his lead for the offense up, but also... I can use more calls. So just like we were doing with Bell calling Beast and Horn King, you can set Triton to also call Beast and Horn King. So now Beast and Horn King are getting lots of attacks and we're getting lots of those 40,000, 50,000 damage hits on the Titan throughout the raid. So I'm going to be taking a look at a particular run with this team involving Triton and Tiana along with the other trio. 
So I want to give another big thanks to Bearded Dad Bod for the video. This is another one of those very strong teams we use at Kamundra against the Tornado Titan. But again, if the Tornado Titan's down, this team does very, very well against Lava as a backup. So now that we've broken down the team, let's go look at the footage from the run. So to start with spells, we usually use Cauldron. There's not too many teams that really need Cauldron, but what's nice about this is with the placement of Cauldron, you can actually get Triton calling it, just feeding magic to everybody. So it's always going to be a win in this team. The second spell I like is Iago. So Iago is going to be able to help remove buffs. And what's nice here is the little tornadoes are going to stay up the whole time, but they do steal your buffs. So occasionally they're going to steal something like a protect from Tiana's gumbo pot. And it's going to be annoying that you're going to be having to attack the little tornado without being able to focus on the main tornado. So because of that, we put Iago in here so he can pull that off of one of the tornadoes. So you can always have a clear shot on the main tornado. Next, I'm going to move over here. That way we can actually see the placement of the team. You can see we put Tiana on a far side. The reason why we put Tiana on that far side is because she's always going to put the gumbo pot behind her. So again, it's going to allow that damage to go that way instead of the way of your damage dealers like Triton, Beast, and Horn King. Speaking of that, we have Beast on the other side. So we put Beast in the corner. We put Triton behind Beast, and then we put Horn King right in the front center. This is because Triton's assist is going to call Horn King and Beast every time he does his second special. This placement also helps with Bell. So because where Beast is placed, Bell will always call Beast and the front center character. So you're always going to get that Horn King and Beast attack call as well. So this is really the optimal placement. So now we're going to watch the run and we're going to break it down as it's going through. So we can see the first thing we do is we throw down pot. We get that going and we're going to go ahead and use Triton's Blessings. So you use Blessings because the next time we use Blessings, we're going to be able to put Triton's Boon on all our characters, which is a lot of damage. So let's pause it right here. We've got the tornadoes up. So now that the mini tornadoes are up, what we're going to do is we're going to use Beast Yell, and we're going to hope, cross our fingers, that we can get Intimidate on both of the tornadoes. But you want to make sure you're focusing on one of the mini tornadoes here. So you're going to see the yell here, and then we're going to go into Horn King. So again, Horn King, like we said before, you always want to put the cauldron down first. You want to get that down, and that's going to make sure that he's doing his big damage each time it comes around. So with Triton, you want to make sure it's only Blessings and it's only Basics that he's going to do. And here you can see with Bell, we've also went ahead and done the Mirror on the left side. So that's going to always hit the two Tornadoes, put Intimidate, and you can see that these three have been controlled. And they're just going to kind of sit there and do their thing. So from here, we're just going to attack over and over and over against this Tornado. So when it comes to Triton, we're going to use the Blessings, trying to get Triton's Boon up as many times as we can. And basics. Bell's just going to use basics from here on. Your Horn King is really just going to use basics. You can use the, the AoE spell and do some heals, especially if his health has been falling because maybe he's gotten hit or something like that. But for the most part, his basics do a lot of damage, and you do run the risk of doing the AoE spell and putting heal block on a lot of the little tornadoes. And if you kill all the tornadoes, well, he's going to spawn more and you're going to be in a bad, bad spot. So going through here, we're just using our spells. The gumbo pot is pretty good, but you do have to understand that when you do the big AoE attack, they don't always go straight at the Titan. Sometimes they hit the little tornadoes, so you do have to be careful that you don't kill all the mini tornadoes. So usually one gumbo pot's fine. The second one, it can be a little bit iffy. So here, there's a decision here of do you just do your basic attack, because at this point, the tornado is getting a turn, or do you go ahead and use Iago uh, as you're going through? So Iago can pull off a couple different spells. You can either get the Protects off or that Triton's Boon. Or you can hold it and wait until they start to get the Taunts or some other uh, buff like that out there. Now, our Triton went down first. That's not optimal. Realistically, you want Tiana to go down first, but it's okay. So we're just doing our damage a little bit over time, working through to get as much damage in as we can. So you can see there with Beast. I mean, that right there was over 24,000 just with his basics alone. So you want to be aware of his basic compared to his leap because once the Titan doesn't have any debuffs, his basic's only going to hit twice unless he has a debuff. So keep that in mind when you maybe want to save his leap because you don't have any debuffs uh, and he doesn't have any debuffs, you can do your leap. But if you still have a debuff, even though the Titan is empowered, you may want to use your basic over your leap, because he will heal those debuffs over time. So 
So you can see the Horn King's doing great damage, 18,000 damage just with this basic attack. We've got Beast doing his damage. Bell's calling both of them to attack. Just everything's really going the way we want it to. And you're really just going to go through this battle until everyone dies. And you really want Beast to be the last survivor. And in most cases, he tends to be. The important thing here is you really don't want to use your yell again with Beast or anything like that just because he's going to come out of empowered. You want to make sure you're doing your main damage. And that's why we only use basics and leaps. So you can see here with this run, we're well over 500k, which is a great score. Yeah, it's not the 2 million damage that we saw with Eve. It's not the 2 million damage that we're seeing with Ian. But realistically, this is one of the next big damage dealing teams. So like I mentioned before, you can do 500k on Tornado. You can do 500k on Lava. So if you're looking into what the next team is that you want to invest in, this is definitely one of those great teams. Speaking of great teams, I'm going to be putting out a video next week talking about some of the top five raid teams for free to play and for the pay to play. So make sure you leave a comment below on what team you think should make that list. And as always, guys, y'all take it easy.